the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. So let's look at the natural laws of wealth and abundance. I don't know how many of them we can cover, but we'll hopefully just touch one or two and then pray. The day the Lord grants us another opportunity, I'm sure that the Lord would use me or any of his servants and grant us grace. Hallelujah. Natural laws. Natural does not mean they don't have the power of God. No, they're just that these are laws that are applicable to all men. The spiritual laws give us an edge and an advantage because we're in Christ. But these natural laws are principles that anyone can apply. You see, the thing about the laws of God, the natural laws especially, is that you don't have to believe in God for them to work for you. There is a dimension of God's power that is already invested in them. Even if an umbrella farms, the crops will yield. Are we together now? Yes. Because a law was already invested in the earth that it should produce. And so I pray that God will grant us grace. The first law, and this is one of the most powerful, one of the most powerful natural laws that you will ever be taught about wealth and abundance, is called the law of the mind. The law of the mind. The law of the mind. This is a very fundamental financial law. Remember I told you yesterday that years ago in my quest to learn about finance, I stumbled across books i have studied the forbes list of 100 billionaires one by one every one of them you know most times people think men of god don't know anything about money that all we're doing is just fasting and praying we have serious people and then because i also don't want to be poor we've, we've agreed that poverty is very evil and bad don't believe it, don't accept it, not for you, not for your children. There is no blessing in it, believe me. I've had the privilege of studying materials of very successful people in a quest to understand. And foolishly, every time I saw them talk about the traits and the mindsets that made for wealth, I thought they were just deceiving people. I was really sad. Because I thought, you just tell me, okay, this is a book. What business are you doing? What job do you have? Go straight to the point, I said. You don't have that time to you write a 240-page book all talking about how to think. What in the world is that? But I didn't know what I know now. But thank God I still know it now all the same. And I'm praying that as I share with you this truth, that God will grant you the grace to really, really understand. The mind is a powerful miracle. A powerful miracle that God gave man. You cannot sustainably be wealthy if you do not possess the requisite level of belief systems. Please listen. There is a set of beliefs that make for wealth. There is a set of beliefs that make for poverty. In fact, the reason why the law is this, I started talking about it yesterday. 
the bible says this sign shall follow them that believe so everybody believes and what you believe will attract physical things to come to you trouble tragedy failure something about your belief system is attracting them if you are tired of them you don't drive them away they will remain provided the belief system is there what you do is to change the belief system and then they will go with that belief system now there are many wrong belief systems the bible says for as he thinketh in his heart he didn't say so he will become so he is you already are your thoughts literally literally your belief systems create your possibilities and create your realities this is not some scientology this is the word of god the bible says let this mind be in you jesus did not just carry a healthy spirit he carried a healthy belief system there was a belief system that made for the signs and wonders there was a belief system that made him to build something and conquer the whole world in three years he says permit that mindset to be in you which was also in christ jesus hallelujah yeah. the journey one of the hardest assignments of the holy spirit if i would use that expression in the life of the believer is convincing you to leave your current thinking your current mindset and adopt a superior one because you see we have built a system of comfort around our current thinking and every time the challenge comes to transit is usually uncomfortable so the holy spirit has to continue to help us through the world to engage in strategic transformation not just new information information that is superior and sustains the ability to change our lives you are not changed until your mind changes watch this i i gave this example many years ago while i was teaching on a financial series you notice that someone can wear a nice cloth beautiful cloth say a white shirt and that person may be with that shirt for one year and you'll still see it looking new carry that same shirt and give someone who is running around the street in two weeks the mindset of that person will start speaking on the shirt the same shirt someone wore many times we complain and we say a ceo is receiving one million per month and not doing anything we say under ac with juices and all kinds of things and then we complain that there is a security man at the gate and is receiving thirty thousand. it's unfair here is my proposal switch them take the ceo to the gate and take the gate man to the office let me attempt to describe for you what will happen the first thing the gate man will do is to steal as soon as he lands there the shock he knows that he will not be there for a long time he's already aware so the first thing he will do is he will not place value on the files because information is unnecessary for him he will never open the laptop or he will be thinking of selling the laptop not opening to find out what is there he will check quickly if there's physical cash there are we together he will not collect the phone numbers and the contacts there they mean nothing to him he wants to sell the phone the owner whoever he sells the phone to can delete the contacts because to him the phone is richer than the contacts are you seeing now i'm describing for you what will happen he will open the fridge and eat and eat even when he's full and steal everything and two three days the office will start looking like his mindset dirty unkept everything scattered disorganized now let's go to our ceo who is at the gate the first thing the ceo will do is how can i automate this gate because i can't keep pushing like that he will sit down the first thing he's at the gate and then his character of courtesy will make the people to not need to go to the office again they will start stopping at the gate because their problems will be solved there so the man collecting the one million was not the ceo it was the mindset the man collecting the thirty thousand 
was not the security man it was the mindset come let's assume that this gentleman is an armed robber the moment you catch this man stealing and you shoot him it is not an armed robber that is on the ground it's a dead body so who was really the armed robber there was a thinking that convinced him that you have to steal to get now assuming you preach this man comes to a church like this and suddenly you preach to him and he gives his life to christ the same person who was once an arm robber now becomes a man of god the body did not change what changed now look with me a naive young man who just gets admission to study mbbs confused and yet believes that one day he'll be called a doctor they never change the body they may not even change the cloth they pass him through a system and after six seven years his name changes immediately because a belief system was given to him so the millionaire is not the body the millionaire is the mindset the poor man is not the body the poor man is the mindset as he thinketh in his heart something that has refused to leave you is there in honor of your mindset the pain the disappointment there is something about your belief system that drives good people from your life it's not just everybody hates me no you may be well intentioned but you must be schooled and mentored and reoriented are we together have you noticed that as you rise higher and higher the executive cadre, the people are more cautious, more understanding? Lower down the chain, you find people shouting. What, what do, you, do you think it's just because I'm working here? I'm this and that and that. And then someone comes out who is the head of operations. All right, sorry. We're really sorry. Okay, that's okay. Let me talk to the person. And they know immediately that this is a senior executive. He doesn't have to say it. He doesn't have to wear anything. His mindset immediately shows the difference between him and the rest. And he invites that one to the office. And he's talking. Could it be that the reason why things are not working is because there are belief systems we have sustained? Are we together now? Thank you. Now let's examine very quickly a few belief systems. I'm going to be very fast. Forgive me. I will give you very quickly four reasons why so many people are poor. Are you ready? Number one, they have not decided to be wealthy. Underline the word decided. Many people are poor because they have not decided to be wealthy. They wish to be wealthy. They hate poverty. They talk about prosperity, but they have not decided to be wealthy. The difference between a wish and a decision is that a decision is a determination to reach an end with the awareness of the consequences that it will take. Are we together? One day ago, Beta is just a sociological way saying a decision is a determination backed up by the willingness to pay the price. Until that willingness is there, it's not a decision many people have not decided they have decided to hate poverty they have decided to talk about their problems but they have not decided to be wealthy number two why are so many people poor they do not have a goal to be wealthy a clearly defined desire a clearly defined expectation Pastor, things are not working in my life. What do you want? I don't know. I just know that things are not working. You are not going to get it that way. Imagine a man entering a car and he just kicks it and starts running. Where are you going to? He said, just keep watching. Have you climbed a bike going somewhere? And then the bike man claimed that he knew where he was going. Oh, do you know this place? Ah, I know it. And then later on, you find out that he's been going around an area for a long time. Say, I thought you said you know it. Say, well, eh. Uh, at the last time i don't know if he's that i think we missed somewhere yet the guy claimed he knew where he was going it's amazing that for 99 percent of your journey you never see your destination yet if you are sure of it you will get there 
there is no goal for many of us we have not set it as a goal to be wealthy number three why are so many people poor they lack the understanding of the real formula for wealth and abundance oh there is a there is a real formula there is a science to wealth and abundance and many believers many well-intentioned well-meaning church people do not really know the formula we just know pieces of information that relates to wealth but they've not been sequentially and methodically arranged to produce prosperity the formula for wealth and abundance and then number four why are so many people poor lack of the mental transition from the realm of poverty to the realm of wealth the inability to contend for transition the mental transition it will take to move from the realm of poverty to the realm of abundance is god helping us already now i'm, I'm working on our mindsets now there are five myths that surround the issue of prosperity and abundance there are five mindsets five major mindsets pastor that i have found out that most people who don't succeed they have those mindsets dangerous belief systems can we walk through them five very quickly number one the first belief system is that money and abundance is carnal is evil or is unnecessary and they get that scripture from first timothy chapter 6 and verse 10 money and abundance is carnal is evil and is unnecessary so in a bid to be holy or in a bid to love the lord they feel that i have to reject wealth and abundance and this is the scripture for the love of money is the root of all evil the Bible never said money is the root of all evil. It says for the love of money. The word there is eros. One of the translations of the word love. Eros. Eros means an ungodly affinity. An attachment that is at the detriment of your relationship with God. It says when you have that kind of affinity towards money, it becomes the foundation for all kinds of evils. Are we together now? materialism is not having materials materialism is the influence of materials over your relationship with god there are poor people who are materialistic money and abundance is carnal if i ask all of you to shout the word rich you will be surprised how embarrassed you will be mentioning that word you are a Christian or you are born again. You've been praying in tongues for a long time. I just say, shout the word rich. You will feel guilty almost to ask for forgiveness. There is something, there is a programming that has happened to us. We associate wealth with a very, very negative disposition. Number two, very quickly. What's the second myth that keeps people poor? If God really wants me rich, he will make me rich. So we leave the responsibility to God and we get our backing from Psalms 84 and verse 11. Please pay attention. If God really wants me rich, he will make me rich. So if I'm not rich, it must be that God wants me this way. And here's the scripture. The Bible says, for the Lord God is a son and a shield. He will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. So we use it as a justification. It is within his power to make great riches and wealth and honor in his hands. So if God wants me to prosper, I'm sure he would prosper me. It was Bishop Oyedeko who said, every Christianity that makes God entirely responsible for the outcome of your life is an irresponsible Christianity. There will always be a participatory role that you have to play in actualizing any divine promise in your life. Are we together? Myth number three that tithing is the one and only key to abundance it looks like a very sincere understanding but it's a dangerous one there are many people who believe that the only key to wealth and abundance is tithing tithing is the one and only key to abundance they say 
because of Malachi chapter 3 and verse 10. That is a very destructive myth. Tithing is a foundational key like we've considered. But in truth, it is not the only key. It is one of the many keys. Are we together? Very quickly, number four. And pay attention to this one. Because many, many people, Africans, Nigerians, are victims of this mindset. Here it is. If all I have is a business idea and startup capital, I will be rich. Oh dear. I repeat. If all I have is just an idea and capital, I will be rich. It's not exactly so. Business idea plus capital is not equal to abundance. There are many other variables in that equation. Are we together? Yes. I remember someone who met her uncle years ago, harassing the man and trying to point to the man that he's been so insensitive to the needs of the family. And the man said, I know if I give you people money, you're not going to do anything. And he said, uncle, give us X, Y, Z amount and we'll never disturb you for the rest of your life. And the man, the man just laughed. And he gave them something small. He said, if you can come back after two or was it two or three months and prove to me that you've used it well, I will give you more. Guess what happened? They never came back. Because chances are, if they give you capital, your mindset will not allow you to rest. You will first touch it. Then you will borrow from it, promising to return back. Then you will get into trouble. Then you will pass a restaurant and there's no self-control. And you say, what is there? I can't be holding money like this and kill myself. Even God knows that. You see that? These are all the traits. By the time you get home, the money has divided into half. Then you will emotionally get up after listening to a message and carry the remaining and say you are sowing it. And as good as that looks, at the end of it, you will go back and you will feel, you will feel evil. for what you have done mindsets it didn't work that means there is more to the equation let's discuss the last one the last one is called entitlement mentality oh dear nigerians entitlement mentality what is that the feeling that someone somewhere is responsible for your success the feeling that someone somewhere could be an uncle could be a friend could be your pastor could be your family members could be your relatives that somebody somewhere owes you success there are people who move around getting angry with uncles and aunties in nigeria if you prosper from a family where you are the only one who rises you have to pray for the rest to rise too because if you rise alone everybody will come and blackmail you i'm a stakeholder in that such confidence they harass you they make you feel guilty that's why people don't testify nobody will testify that the money they have been waiting for has arrived because they don't want trouble as soon as people are, are aware oh dear mindsets 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 let me show you something genesis 11 Genesis 11. We're going to read the first four or five verses. It was a revelation God gave me that changed my life, Pastor. And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. Please look up. Verse 2. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east, they found a plain in the land of China and they dwelt there. Nimrod Kush now and his team. Verse 3. And they said to one another, Go to let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and slime they had for mortar. Keep that scripture there. Now, let me explain to you what happened. Nimrod Kush, alongside his team, they came from the east to the land of China, intending to build a city and a tower, they said, whose top will reach the heavens. And the first thing he began to do was to market that idea. They had not started building. He started speaking to them. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to build. And the tower will reach the heavens. Let's see what happens in the realm of the spirit. Verse 4. 
it says let us build a city and a tower whose top may reach the heavens and let us make us a name lest we be scattered abroad from the face of the whole earth verse 5 now the bible says and the lord came down something was happening from earth that attracted there are not many times god came down to the earth remember in this story demons are not mentioned satan is not mentioned just men and their minds the bible says the lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men have already finished building they have not started building it yet but just because their minds were receiving that idea in the realm of the spirit god saw a structure already building understand this and he came to see it and he said as far as these people are they have conceived this as a reality the building is finished he had to scatter them physically this they begin to do the next verse says and they have one language and this they begin to do so physically they were about to start the project but in the realm of the spirit it was finished this is powerful everything is built twice first in your mind and then physically if that thing is built in your mind already there is no power in existence that sustains the ability to stop it from manifesting please listen listen i always counsel people that rather than living a fake life trying to wear clothes that you are not yet ready for trying to you know fly a business class you're not ready for no don't worry don't worry about the body just let the mind go ahead your mind can be an usher when it gets there your mind will lead your body to that realm for sure are we together now yes every man you see while i was watching the the documentary of one of the men who will be coming to speak to you your pastor was just telling me a little about him and could you see the contrasting photos a young man who was playing looking dirty and tattered is the man now who owns a group of companies around the world what change not his body you could still identify his face the mind let me tell you transformation is a real miracle more than lifting someone from a wheelchair transformation is a miracle the miracle of the mind my life began to change when i found out that when you change in your mind everything around you changes now i want to demonstrate something i do it every time i'm teaching about the mind and i'm praying that if all we talk about is the mind that's that's still sufficient for this service because for many of us, these business ideas, investment, just leave those things. Wealth is not pursued. Wealth primarily is attracted through your growth and transformation. More than what you do, it is who you are that attracts wealth. Listen again. More than what you do, it is who you are that attracts wealth. Life is dimensional. And every level you rise to, there are possibilities already designed by God to come to you. Let me give you an example. How many of you know that if your pastor stands upstage here now and says, I am hungry, what do you think will happen to you? As soon as you hear him say, I am hungry, you will begin to invent, what can I cook for my pastor? Because the level God has lifted him should not allow him to say, I am hungry and remain hungry. So now he's getting that blessing through growth. It's not so much what you are doing. The most powerful blessing in your journey to wealth is not the money itself. It's what happens to you on the way. It is greater than the money. Ask any blessed man. Their real satisfaction is not Naira and Kobo. The Naira and Kobo is just the receipt that you arrived well. It is your transformation. Who you become. The newer version of you is more superior than the business. When you talk to wealthy people, when they are talking to you personally, they will not talk about their businesses. They will not talk about all those things. They will talk about their stories. 
They want to show you their transformation. Now I want to show you something. Many of you have watched videos where I demonstrated it. Let me do it one more time. Is that fine? Please let me have six people. Six well-dressed gentlemen. No, no, no. You sit down. Let the workers. Okay. Just a few people. Just come. Just stand three here and then three here, please. May you never forget this example for the rest of your life. Stand this way, my friend. Just turn. You stand. Just turn. All of you facing me. You turn the same way. Yes. Now watch this. Ah, may someone see this and understand. Space yourselves a bit, guys. Watch this. Life is in levels. Everybody watch this, please. Life is in levels. You hold this. You hold this. Hold it carefully. You hold this. Don't mind my example. I'm, I, I'm insisting that you must understand. Are we together? Now, at every level in your life, watch this. Remember, these are the things. Lift everything you're holding, please. Remember, these are the things you want. Fame, cars, business, pounds, dollars. They are already a possibility. But every time they come to you, there is a version of you they are looking for. Listen carefully. It is not every version of you that can attract them. So they keep coming and they don't meet you because the you they are looking for has not yet evolved. Listen carefully. It looks like right now this is you standing here. Oh God, why wouldn't my life change? What is there about a car that you will not give me? It's already in your destiny. But the version of you it is looking for, you have not evolved yet into it. Please listen carefully. So what happens? These are all the things. How am I going to get a house? How am I going to get money? How am I going to get lifting? Don't worry, that's none of your business. The God who designed the system is intelligent enough. Save yourself the stress of thinking of how they will come. They are already there. Everything you are looking for is also looking for you. But it's not looking for this version of you. Please listen. You came to church. Gentlemen, please shift back a little. Here's what I want you to do for me. Every time I take a step forward, come close to me too. Watch this. I'm transforming my mind. I know that one day I will meet these things. So as I'm studying books and praying, shake it, baratabha. Lord, I will not be a failure. Are you seeing this now? I am growing. What is happening to me? As I am growing, suddenly, I begin to have some testimonies in my life. What is suddenly happening? In my business, I'm beginning to meet a class of people. My phone contact is changing. It's a report card. I didn't even know when some numbers were deleted from my phone. I didn't delete it intentionally. Very soon, my phone too will change, not just the contact. One day, by what you call coincidence, I will meet with a tailor who will start sewing properly for me. He was always there. My growth. Listen, come. A realm will come when you are in the middle of all this. The wealthy place. At your beck and call, you can pick them. They have now come close to you. Go back again, guys. Let's do it again. Let me show you where you are now. Every Sunday when you come to church, you may not know what is happening. Come, Sunday, next week, week after next, while you are praying in your room, while you are studying pastor's materials, this is what is happening. Foolish people will tell you, you are still there in that one room. They do not know that your evolution is calling things to your life. Listen to me. Now watch this. Go back. Let me show you something. Let me show you what a fake life is. Stand here. A fake life is you have not been transformed to this realm, yet you want the result of that realm. So you will quickly save money and buy it. And the moment you buy it, your mind will interpret it as an error because your mind says you are possessing something that your growth should not have in your life. Coincidences will make that thing leave you. You must return back to your real state. This is a law. This is the mystery behind this balloon success you see here and there. Suddenly someone just got 5 million and the guy is happy and in his mind he believes that his colleagues with all those who grew to that realm. 
you know you have gotten to a realm where everything in your life also grows you cannot be in a business class i'm not insulting you don't feel bad you cannot be in a business class with a wristwatch of 2000 you are not yet there because when you really grow there everything grows also are we together you can't be driving a jeep and then parking to buy one gallon of fuel you are not there no true wealth is a product of being not doing but the people that do know their god so knowledge first then they shall be then they shall do they shall be then they shall do focus on being more than doing this is why any business you do fails it's not always an attack the problem is a mindset if i wear a jean trouser it's the same me if i decide to wear agbada it's the same me so no matter what business you switch to if it's the same mindset running that business it will still fail the same way if your mindset has transited anything at all can bless you someone lay hands on your head and decree and declare lord i agree with you for my transformation i'm tired of holding on to age-long beliefs that keep me poor that keep me limited now i know that it's not just about doing business as important as that is it's about my transformation my growth hallelujah listen many years ago i was in one room one small room when the lord told me i would take you to the nations and i will bless you you will stand before kings one room and yet i agreed with him my body did not need to leave the room my mind since i can't get a visa let my mind go no immigration officer will stop it holy spirit hold that mind and let's go and when your mind goes there your mind returns back to tell your body that place exists let's go your mind is the authorized usher that leads your body are you getting what i'm saying now most of us feel stupid if they call you now and say what are you doing about your finances and you say i'm studying materials and i'm building most people will laugh at you and say sit down there and die don't go and look for something to do it's not always what to do it is your being first you do not get afraid take your pastor now and his wife take him to london take him to us give him six months he will reproduce this result because it did not come by chance it's a product of knowledge and enlightenment when you prosper just by doing you will be afraid of your result because you will suspect it will not last and you are right it won't last but if what you get is by growth everything around you does not make you afraid because even when it disappears you have the power to make it happen again this is why it will be easy for you to give if someone dash you money and they gave you one million if i come as a man of god and i say give me the one million will you agree you will look at me and say, I cast, I respect you, but I, I cast that spirit from you. But if you got it by knowledge and growth, you can give freely because you have the power to replenish. I'm not afraid of any result in my life today. I tell you sincerely, none of it came by luck. It can be reproduced a thousand times regardless the geography. I'm sorry if I sound arrogant. It is true. If in 24 hours no one favors me, I will go for a retreat. At the level God has brought me now. Because I know 24 hours is too much. God brought you to church to shake you and to challenge you. Not just that you are mesmerized by this truth. Because some of you, you are here, you are saying, Apostle, I don't know where to start. Don't worry. You are learning the laws. Remember again. You are a man of God. You are moving around with invitation cards. 
I'm anointed. No. The fact that you have to tell people you are there as a man of God is a sign that something is wrong. You are a worker in church. This is how you start. While you are growing, this will start happening to you. Supernaturally, in your department, they will say lead prayer one day. Are you seeing now? When you lead that prayer, then one day, the pastor will say lead opening prayer in church and he will gather all your destiny helpers in front of you that day. But when you have worked on yourself, it becomes your season of appearance. The moment you say that God will cause someone to look at you and say, ah, what is it that you do? You say, well, God is helping me. You say, I have one youth fellowship. Would you come and just say hello to them? Don't despise them. Because that day, God will make the owner of an oil and gas company to come and just decide to join his children that day. Let me show you the mysteries of the lifting power of transformation. While God was training you, he never told you you will meet an oil and gas person. Your growth keeps drawing them. Save yourself the stress of knowing how it will happen. No, that's not your assignment. How is a burden that is bigger than you? Just as you do not know how bones are formed in the womb of high, who is with child, nor the way of the wind, the Bible says, so you do not know the ways of God. His ways are past finding. Leave that to his intelligence. Yours is to just trust. There are people God has brought to my life today. I never, how would I have met them? Growth. You see, when you are growing, you are not the only one growing. So all those who are growing like you, there is a point you will meet. The CEO that you are looking for is also growing. You just keep growing. Forget about trying, trying. You are not alone. The Holy Ghost is there helping you. One day, somewhere at the point of your growth, there will be a collision. It's no coincidence that we are meeting with your pastor today and his wife and preaching in the church here. Remember once upon a time, this place was not here. I was asking him yesterday and said, how did you build this amazing place? And when he told me the story, I said, there it is. Egypt, they left Egypt in one day, but they carried Egypt in their mind. Egypt kept causing trouble for them. A journey of 40 days became 40 years because Egypt would not leave them. Many of you have left your village, but it's still with you. Many of you have left your pain, but it's still with you. Many of you left yesterday, but yesterday is still relieving itself in you. You came to church this morning to say enough is enough. Some of you just, you are waiting right now. Oh God, capital. Are you seeing that not every delay is demonic? God delayed your uncle from giving you that money until you hear this message. Otherwise, you will waste that money the same way it happened last year again. I know that all it takes in fact i know the mistake i made yesterday i'll correct it now and your mind is still in yesterday i am passionate about my transformation i am passionate about my transformation jesus at age 12 when his colleagues were running around causing trouble in the city he was there engaging in transformation by age 30 that gentleman was already ready to take the world Listen to me. Some of you are seated here right now. Nobody may know you. But let your mindset transit enough. And one day you will see the people you used to admire. Bow their heads and say, it's an honor to meet you. And then you will tell the person, do you know I desired seeing you? Brothers and sisters, listen to me. I know what I'm telling you. The Lord, through your transformation, you give God space. To open up doors and do tremendous things in your life. One more time. Let me show you your destiny. Are you willing to pay the price? Instead of buying clothes and living a fake life. Buy the materials that transform you. Ah, I came to your house and all I see is just Gary. Take it with honor while you grow. Don't be embarrassed that you're today. You will miss it soon. Don't rush seasons. And while you grow, Lord, I know 
Shake up Aratakata. The nations will come to bless me in the name of Jesus. Lord, I may come from a background where nothing is happening, but I trust your ways. I know I am rising. I know I came from a family where we never had a television, but Lord, I know. And you open your eyes one day and you are in the midst of blessings that will never be reversed again. Do you believe what I just shared with you? Listen to me. I give you an assignment. Focus on building your mind. More than the job you do, more than the business you do, the real place of investment is your mind. Anything outside you, don't trust it. Things are only secured when they are inside you. I don't trust anything outside me. But what is in you? Are we blessed? You have some money right now in your pocket. You have some money right now in your account. I know you have some properties for some of you. You have some businesses that are flourishing. I agree. I respect what you've done so far. But God is shifting us to realms. Realms beyond what you have seen. Possibilities that will dumbfound you. Many of the people you are looking for today, if you will pay the price for your growth. I tell you, a law was created and creation still respects that law. When you grow, that which is equivalent to your growth must come to you. Must come to you must come to you how many of you have thought of someone and then the person is just calling you because it's a law he didn't just think of you he didn't just call you there is more than happens in that happens in our world than the physical you have to believe this do you know why god is teaching us this so that you can defend your prosperity because we live in a nasty society that believes people are just lucky. So when you come, they just tell you how oh, you are lucky. I'm sure they just favored you. That son name, is it the one that I know? And you are even saying you learned any principle. They just dash you money. No. You can make defense of the truth that you have. That I, I was, yes, it's the grace of God. But it's not by luck. I can reproduce it again. Then you can raise others also. Literally lift people from ground up. There is a science to abundance. One of it. Is the law of the mind. Can you give me five minutes to talk on one more? Gentlemen, thank you. The Lord bless you. You will never go down in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you. Are we blessed? Pray in the spirit in one minute. Just to absorb what you have received. Shilas kali prahagaduzia katabrendegidiyash. that's all right praise the lord now listen the second law is called the law of value the second law is called the law of value proverbs chapter 18 and verse 16 the law of value my god somebody's life is truly changing in the name of jesus the christ of god someone's life is changing look up please proverbs 18 and verse 16 says the gift of a man makes room for him the gift of a man makes room for him and that gift like an usher can bring him before great people he has no business being among the great but his gift can make room before then there's no room for him there was no room for esther the palace already had someone sitting there but the gift of a man the law of value write this down your value is a measure of your usefulness your value is a measure 
of your uniqueness. Your value is a measure of your capacity to provide solutions. Your value is a measure of your usefulness. Your value is a measure of your uniqueness. Your value is a measure of your capacity to provide solutions. This is a world that operates based on a reward system. That means that if you are not providing solutions, listen carefully, there is no reward that is mandated to come towards you if you are not providing solutions. Only those who provide solutions are authorized for reward. Not those who are alive, not those who are living, not even those who are sincere. Your value is the edge that you have in this busy world. That's what sustains the ability to cause the attention of men towards you, to love you, to reward you, and to see to it that you are blessed. Many, many people do not pay attention on this law, the law of value. The Bible says the gift of a man can make room for him, it says, and that it can bring him before great people. I wish we had time, we would have looked at Genesis chapter 40 and Genesis 41. Write it please for the sake of time. The Bible talks about a young Hebrew boy. When a lady said he raped her, the, the wife of, um, um, what's his name now? Potiphar. They threw him in the prison and he was there. Didn't know he was just days. I mean, maybe about two or so years left to be out of the prison. He meets these two gentlemen and then interprets their dream. One was hung and then the wine presser was restored back. Watch this. When it was time for God to lift Joseph, he shot the heavens over the sorcerers. The necromancers, they could not use divination again to access heaven. Let me tell you how God lived. He makes sure that everyone who can be a competitor is out of the way. And then he pushes you and shines the light on your value in the presence of those who need it. Your value on its own does not reward you until it comes in the presence of those who need it. Your value must be needed and useful within the context of a civilization. For it to be rewarded mere value arbitrarily speaking does not bring reward but it must be needed and useful so that morning the king woke up with a dream and he said something is wrong call my wise men call my necromancers and that day the heavens could not open for them and then the wine presser said i remember my wrong this day there was a young man we were in the prison the king was angry and it and this and that and that and he's still there the bible says and the king sent for him and they brought him out of his dungeon then the king began to narrate his dream and pharaoh la um, joseph laughed i'm sure he would just be happy and say my time has come i know i'm not going back to prison again oh king god will give the king an answer of peace the dream you've had is twice and when he interpreted it that was not the solution they would have said, thank you very much. Give him one day's off back to the prison. But he said, king, let me give you the solution. Find a man. It's a diplomatic way of saying, I dare you search if you will find a man. He just was being polite about it. He wouldn't market himself directly like that. So he angled it. He said, let the king use your initiative and search the entire Egypt. If you find such a man, appoint him to save 20 percent of all the increase now for seven years so that at the time of famine you will have enough and the king looked at him and said you think i'm a stupid king didn't i search for people before i called you in a moment his value gave him a wife you know that he married the daughter of potiphera the priest of on like that without any waste of time of will you marry me and the, the wife was given to him value are we together number two the king said from today 
it is only in ranking that i'm ahead of you as far as administration is concerned you are the face that the whole egypt will see i wonder what potiphar would have done i wonder what the wife of potiphar would do seeing him now brothers and sisters your value has a lifting power it can elevate you and put you in a position that your contemporaries would not even be able to go there value is powerful just lend me a few minutes we're done when i found this i made up my mind pastor that in every area where the lord would have me serve the body i would be competent and be valuable it was a commitment and a covenant that i entered with myself and my destiny apostle but i'm valuable relative to who oh i'm a good cook until you can serve kings you are not yet there if you want the reward of kings you have to know how to serve kings i am a cook who is eating your food why do they have to call you only when the professionals disappoint people that's already a call that you need to step up. This is even true for ministry. Maybe there are people watching who are in ministry and you think just because the Holy Ghost comes upon you. Are we together? Just because of the grace of God. No, you must study to show yourself approved. You must be students of scripture. Make up your mind. I say the truth and I lie not. You go to my house now. You will go and find videos I'm watching. There are things I'm doing. Even though there's service in the evening, but once I'm back, I could take a nap and I'm not just going to laugh and say I'm Apostle Joshua Selman. The study continues. I can return back from a great crusade. Lord, thank you for what you did. That's it. Let's get to work. Champions don't pat themselves for too long. Listen to me. You are not contending against mediocres. You must rise to a global standard and it takes diligence. You must be valuable quote scriptures anyhow as a man of god you are saying things that are not there prophecy is still wrong you call somebody's name he's not the one you have five children and say, no no i'm the only one child no 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 I, i'm not i'm not condemning you but go back and work on this thing are we together you have a restaurant your food burns before the time people are hungry they are thirsty they are waiting there's no excellence you must be valuable the superstition we've put around finances is why we don't prosper there is a formula for wealth in business we call it the law of compensation let me just state it and we'll wrap up for this service this is church you see why it's important to hold conferences where we can come and feast because this thing takes time I found this law and it changed my life write it down please that our rewards in life will always be in exact proportion to three things our rewards in life will always be in exact proportion to three things number one the need for what you do number two the ability, your ability to do what you do. That's your level of proficiency. And then number three, the difficulty in replacing you. Our rewards will always be in exact proportion to three things. Number one, the need or the demand for what you do. Number two, your ability or your proficiency in doing what you do. And then number three, the difficulty in replacing you you are valuable to the degree to which it is difficult to find a replacement for you no man is indispensable but be very hard to find a replacement for you then the nations will call you then even those who don't like you will have no choice than to be at your beck and call When I found this formula, I said, this is it. The need. Is there a need for what I do? 
my god there is darkness in this whole world so the next thing is my ability the union of the word and the spirit i read in my scripture how god anointed jesus of nazareth not just that he was anointed he was anointed to such degree and such proportion and i said this is it and then the difficulty in replacing you will you truly find another pastor godwin and the wife oh it will be difficult many of us are easily replaceable that's the reason why you can be downsized carelessly that's why people can give you promises and say when i spoke to you i didn't know there was another person now that they're here please can you go i will consider you another time you must make up your mind that i will be so valuable so valuable years ago when i was teaching this series i got to meet a gentleman who used to work then in kaduna state his minimum salary was 500,000. He was working three times a week and he was working in three places. He was an IT consultant. They would fly him in from Lagos to Kaduna every week without fail. He was so valuable for many years. They pleaded with him to train a few people, but he did and the guys were not understanding it. And the boss said, no matter what, I will keep you. You are valuable. Oh, I'm not feeling fine. Can we get you a doctor? What do we need to do? Because the company is at the mercy of one man's value. I pray for you in the name that is above all names. May the grace for diligence come upon you. Listen, chasing after mediocre rewards will only frustrate you. 10 naira, 20 naira, 150. No, make up your mind that a time will come when kings will bless you and still say thank you. Listen, now I, I don't want to bring bad memories, forgive me. But when there was NSAS, there was something that happened. Palliatives were kept somewhere in a warehouse. Is that true? The warehouse did not have an address. The warehouse did not have publicity. It didn't have an osha, but there were bags of rice inside. Bags of Indomie, bags of sugar, bags of salt. And hunger drove people to navigate among all the buildings to find the one that had it and when they found it they tore that building into two look at the skills that were invented to jump those buildings what if you are that building what if you become that building a compendium of value the address was no longer difficult to locate nobody said that ah, the building is not very nice they look past it they knew let me tell you men will give every kind of excuse to find you when you are really valuable i know this you know you are valuable by who seeks you all men seeks for thee all men there are things when you have only your tribesmen will look for you there are things when you have only the rich will look for you. There are things when you have only the poor will look for you. There are things when you have only children will look for you. There are things when you have only the educated will look for you. But brothers and sisters, there are things when you have all men. All men. All men. Rank yourself by a global reference. Africa thank god for this continent and i know god is helping us but we must be careful because for many of us where we come from even at the point of failure they start clapping for you our world is full of people who don't do much in ministry demand applause whereas there are people changing nations and changing cities god brought you to church so that you will learn i spoke with um, a gentleman who is a personal photographer to the president of the federation and i remember when i was speaking with him before i would pray with him i said young man you are not from the north you are not uh, fulani you are not Hausa. how did you get into the presidency because i hear he's one of the few people that can literally play with the president like play and i said okay this is interesting how did that happen was it through a connection and he said no i found out it was just value and grace value listen i hope you are not angry 
leave that local champion mentality leave it if the highest student in a class got, gets 20 over 100 he's still the highest but did he pass many years ago i was in secondary school and we had this debate you know this quiz and debate and in our local environment we seem to be the best no matter what we did we were still the best until we went to do a uh, i think a state or, or national competition we knew we were joking when we got there the english of the student you know good schools good school fees the uniforms alone when we returned back for the first time i was embarrassed being in that school as young as i was i started going to the state library the state library i said no even though i'm from this background i reject i i will not receive the prophecy that comes with this background don't give me the excuse and say i came from this i didn't have the opportunity to go no kill that excuse today in the name of jesus i want you to leave this service with an anger a determination god is calling me to the oil and gas sector the key is not to roam around nmpc leave them alone go back and do your homework don't pamper yourself even when you cry burn the candles wake up in the night when others are sleeping you're a man of god it's not the time to sleep it's too early uh -uh. stay until you get something that is of substance open your bible and study when they are sleeping pray cry before your maker god bring something upon my life you are praying that if anybody ever gives me his mic to stand upon his pulpit, he won't be waiting for me to go down and then warn the executives and say, don't ever bring this man to this church again. No. Money is a receipt. Money is proof. Listen, when you buy a product, you only receive a receipt when it is being paid for. Money is a receipt that you have paid the price. When you have paid the price, the receipt comes to you. We have to pray. Please rise up on your feet. Our service time is on. I apologize for taking a few minutes. But let's just steal two minutes out and pray. Listen. I don't know why God brought you here, but after me will come many great speakers, your pastor inclusive, and they are going to be sharing with you very serious things. I wish we had the time to deal with other issues, but this is already sufficient foundation for you. It is on the strength of this. Business is simply a channel that gives your value expression. Listen to me. It is not just about business. Business is simply a channel. When you package your value, listen carefully, you package your value and you serve it with excellence to a targeted consumer base. That is business. That's all business is. Business is not a shop. It's not oil and gas. It's not real estate. It's simply the art of packaging your value, serving it with excellence to a targeted consumer base. The most important thing is not the building. Is you are we ready to pray father I make a covenant with my destiny that I will never be mediocre I make up my mind that I will contend for transformation I make up my mind that I will be exceptionally valuable exceptionally valuable as a man of God as a business person as a lecturer as a career person is someone praying let the days of shame and reproach that comes through incompetence and amateurism be out of my life i embrace competence master your field master your field in ministry master your field in business spend time buy books buy your pastor's materials spend time listen and listen again listen and listen again listen and listen again pray whilst you do so
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. This is my final session. I want to speak over your life. You don't have to kneel. Please stand. After teaching all of the principles, there are others. There are three supporting principles to the law of value. Hallelujah. It's called the law of productivity. Productivity is turning your value into products and services that are needed and useful, then serving them with excellence. The third law I wanted to talk about is called the law of increase. And there are three supporting laws there. One of it is called the law of exchange. Your pastor alongside other people will teach you. They will teach you multiple streams of income. They will teach you the laws of investment. They will teach you financial management. Because management is the key to increase. Every time there is no management, increase is withheld. Increase is proof that there is effective management. But then... There is a prophetic dimension to wealth and sad for the time but i want to just speak this i sincerely apologize i am sorry and i apologize to you but i have to tell you this because we are people of the kingdom when we have an advantage so when we journey through these business angles now just prophesying and speaking to people without teaching them these fundamentals will only destroy them and produce lazy people who move around and say i have an anointing for prosperity and yet they are not valuable but then in addition to all of these laws let me give you a story it was not always like this for me i shared with you my story once upon a time we went for a crusade and we could not pay the sound people one hundred and fifty thousand. I was about to be taken to the cell not because i was a bad person i preached the gospel people were healed but i could not afford to pay one hundred and fifty thousand. someone came and wrote me a check of eighty thousand, and i gave the person they went to the bank and it bounced they came back together with security people they came down they said no you you want to deceive i said no i'm a sincere person that was when I found out that being anointed and just being sincere is not the seed to prosperity. How could a man be so anointed? Deaf ears were opening, blind eyes were opening, people were healed, and 150,000. It was a while ago, but it was still a serious thing. I pleaded with them, and then I saw a scripture. Genesis 42 and verse 1 and 2. And Jacob told his sons, he said, I have heard that there is corn in Egypt. He said, get the theater and buy for us so that we may eat and not die. Even a prophet will die when there is no corn. The Bible says, Proverbs 22, verse 1 and then verse 7. It says, the rich and the poor meet together. It says, the Lord is the maker of them all. He never said the Lord made them so. The Lord made them all. And then when you get to verse 7, there is a fearful and instructive scripture there. The rich anybody will rule over the poor anybody. The rich unbeliever will rule over the poor prayer warrior. And the borrower will remain a servant to the lender. And I said, minus me. Listen to me. There is a prophetic dimension to wealth. I assure you. There is wealth by prophecy. He says, believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Believe in his prophets. There is a real grace for wealth and prosperity. I began to search for men and women with that grace. Because I was tired of the situations in my life. It never tires me to give my story, sir. 
I bought sugar cane for two women in Joss and they blessed me. I just wanted to bless them because they were elderly people. I said, no, I was trained well. I can't allow my mothers to come here. And I pleaded with them. I said, please let me pay. It was just about 100 Naira. And they turned and began to bless me. And one of them looked at me and said, my son forever walk upon gold. The Lord gave me an instruction that one day he was going to send me to go and meet God's servant, Bishop David Oedeku. And on that morning, I woke up and he said, today is the day. I carried a seed, I will not tell you. But that one is not Ishmael, that's Isaac. When you give it, you can drive Ishmael without thinking about it. But the day you give Isaac, you will know. Precious seeds. When I went down to Canaan land, did what the Lord instructed me to do. When I came out, the Holy Spirit told me, he said, put your hand on the ground. I laid my hands on the ground and he said, from today you have entered the overflow anointing. I was in Port Harcourt in 2007. It was a prosperity convention like this. Please listen carefully. And after the first day, it was Reverend Eddie Owase that was brought to come and preach. Evangelist. When he was done, by the next day, the Holy Ghost gave me an instruction. He said to give everything. How many things did I have? gathered everything plus my recharge card and locked it in the bag that if i give you you will not even collect i prayed in tongues for three hours there because i was tired most of you are not yet tired of your situation sincerely i'm telling you i dragged that thing i was outside like many are outside now it was an overflow and when they finished the meeting people came gave lands gave cars gave houses and i wanted to come out and drop my seed and the holy ghost decided to embarrass me he said remain there first when everybody finished giving theirs, he said, now you can go. I held my bag like I was going for a funeral. And I dragged that bag there. People were looking at me. When you are serious about change, you will not care who is looking at you or who is not looking at you. When I came, I dropped that bag. Something in me died with that bag because it was everything I had. I went back outside and I sat down. And God is my witness. I heard the voice of God. And he said, my son, you have entered into wealth. By the next day, 6, 10, exactly in the morning, somebody calls me shaking under the anointing. Who is this? And he said, are you Joshua Selman? I said, yes. He said, send me your account. I said, no, all these scammers, no way. How much do I have there? You want to now frustrate me. And he said, no. God gave me an instruction. I could not believe what he said. Who are you? He said, it doesn't matter. I was instructed. The rest is history. Listen, I want to challenge you. It is not my culture. And you cannot imagine how difficult it is for me here. But let me tell you this. If I just tell you, share the grace and go home, I lied to you. Listen to what I'm telling you. I lied to you. I'm going to challenge you. There has to be the release of a seed and a sacrifice. If you don't believe what I'm telling you, no problem. No, we are people of integrity. You can go home the way you want. But I'm telling you what I did and what I know happens in scripture. He offered a thousand bond offering that night. And not an angel came. God, he said, what should I do for you? And he said, God, give me an understanding heart. He said, you are wise. Listen, there are times where we've had to shift things. I wish the body of Christ were matured enough to allow us share some testimonies. But sometimes when you want to say it, you just remember what can happen and it's better to just give God glory and continue. But honestly, my brothers and my sisters, listen to me. I know what it means to move from grace. Which one is first? Grass to grace. 
and someone is here you are standing you are not standing for yourself alone here at this house the lord is giving you an instruction i'm going to ask as many of you who the lord is speaking to and saying it's a new season for you that there is a sacrificial seed don't do anything emotional and then come and put yourself in trouble no let every man give as he has purpose in his heart but there are times that you cast even your bread upon the waters bread is for eating but there are times you cast even the bread the bible assures you that after many days you will find it it says give a portion to seven and even here to eight you do not know the disaster that will come upon the earth I live my life and it's a life of sacrifice. I know what God can do. It will not always return as money. It can return as relationships. In this kingdom, who likes you matters. So someone can look at you and vow, no strings attached, that for as long as I'm alive, as God lifts me, he will lift you. Now, I don't know if you have the seed here or you are making a commitment, but if your pastor would allow me, I want to challenge you please don't tell lies you are before jesus christ many people come like this emotionally and then they go back they don't i want to pray for people here who are trusting god and say i want to use a sacrifice as a weapon to get out of this realm of hardship with revelation i'll pray for everybody i'm not going to give you any amount it's you and god but it is something you know that you are ready to get out of it wherever you are i want you to come and stand here in one minute i want to pray for you please don't don't waylay the man of god and his wife and then if here is filled you can still just stand in the aisles as you're here please pray please pray don't waste your time You came to church, our time is already up. But God wants to change our lives. I want you to stand here with revelation. Some of you are in business and the business has refused to move. You have done all you know to do and it has refused to move. Some of you are here and it looks like certain realms you cannot break out of certain financial realms you keep recycling around that realm god has sent me here with a grace in partnership with your pastor pastor may i please request is it all right if i request that you just come here with me you remind me of the sacrifice i made i remember it was a conference with several people nobody saw me but i was determined by god's grace that i would get out of this nonsense once and for all today i give god glory for that decision i want to pray for you and when i pray for you for those of you who have whatever seed you are sowing you can bring it and come and drop it before the altar here for those of you who need to make trans it's between you and god nobody brought you here by force and so make sure that you do not um i don't know what system is going to be but please i want you to mean it some of you god may be directing you to bring seats directly to your man of god don't be afraid you are still in place i know that this is a man that god has shown mercy i know that this is a man god has shown help and i want to pray for you father we are those you have shown mercy and you have shown grace here at this assembly and at this prosperity conference lord i know you are about to shift our lives you do not scam you are not a fraud star you are the god of heaven and in the name of jesus the christ of god I stand in faith and in agreement with Pastor Godwin over these people who have come out. In the name of Jesus, I declare the two lift gate that must be open for the next season of your life financially. We speak to those gates, Efata be open. Efata be open. 
in the name of Jesus, I place an unction upon your life. Hear me. I decree and declare, carry grace from today. Grace that compels the ministry of destiny help us. Everything that represents financial hardship of all sorts, cycles of failure, just when you are about to rise, something happens and brings you down. I call upon my God, who is the God of your pastor, to arise and by prophecy, we shift you, enter a new season, enter a new dimension, even financially. He says, my horn has thou exalted my head, like the horn of a unicorn, and you have anointed me with fresh oil. Thou anointest my head with oil and my cup runs over. I want to pray for you. In the name of Jesus, the grace that compels creation to listen to you, the grace that compels a territory to yield its increase to you, I declare may that grace rest upon you now. Every dying business here, hear the word of the Lord. We speak to you by the spirit of resurrection. Come back to life now. hear me there are many of you who are very valuable but you do not have visibility no one has seen what you represent to honor you is one thing to be gifted acts chapter 12 says that when they bound peter prayers were offered by the church and an angel came the bible says the first gate opened the second gate opened and then they came to the iron gate that leads to the city there is a gate that when it opens, all you see is the city. It's a gate for influence. I want to pray for you. Just because you are out of prison does not mean the city has seen you. There are many anointed people, many gifted people, but the grace for visibility is not yet there. I pray for you, standing in partnership with the grace upon your pastor. In the name of Jesus Christ, receive the grace for visibility. Receive the grace for visibility. The same grace that made the animals to come to the ark of Noah without him looking for them. Two by two, seven by seven. They came in, in concert and entered the ark. May that grace call your destiny help us. In the name of Jesus Christ, wherever they are across this nation, wherever they are across this city, wherever they are around the world, we compel that you enjoy their ministry. And the financial level you currently are now, you are so in at that level, may you never go down past that level. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. For those of you who have your seat, please come and drop it. Your pastor will speak over it. Those of you who are maybe writing, I don't know how we do it. Is there a... Okay. For those following online, I know there are some of you connecting to this service. And now I know that you want to sow, you want to give. Please make sure that you, you just, just lay it at the altar here. Do it orderly and then you can go back to your seat. And then for those who need to make transfers. For some of you here, the Lord might be leading you to sow specific seeds into the life of your man of God and his wife. Don't fight it. It's an instruction by God. And if God gives you that instruction, whatever it is that he says to do, I want you to do it with understanding. Praise the name of the Lord. I want you to do it with understanding and ensure that you sow. Let your sacrifice speak in the name that is above all names. If I were you, whether I came out or not, I will make sure that at least something leaves me to come down here. I will make sure that something leaves me for the sake of his majesty, for the sake of the kingdom. In the name of Jesus Christ. Pastor, thank you. It truly is an honor to have shared the word of God with your people and I love you. I love this church and the Lord bless you. The Lord increase you. Let me encourage you finally, please pay attention to all the other speakers coming. Almost every one of them are people who God has helped in different ways. You must obtain the grace to listen. Go and get your pastor's materials, especially as it concerns finances and stay with it. This morning service is not all that there is. You have to listen again and again for growth and for transformation. The Lord increase you. The Lord bless you.
Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.